what's going on with the Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseny Yatsenyuk, who's here with us in the Situation Room. Mr. Prime Minister, thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure. What needs to be done to reverse what you regard and what the U.S. regards as Russian aggression? Well, you know, Putin is fighting not just with Ukraine. He's fighting with the entire free world, and he's fighting with the United States and the European Union. And I truly commend the efforts that have been undertaken by the G7 member states and this very strong and bold statement. But the thing is that Putin never plays by the rules. He plays with the rules. And we did a lot in order to de-escalate the situation. Not sure that American viewers knew the roots of this conflict, but, you know, in... 20 years ago, Ukraine relinquished its biggest nuclear power arsenal. And it was so-called notorious Budapest Memorandum when we were granted and guaranteed ter territorial integrity, sovereignty, and independence. In the end, we lost Crimea, and we lost a part of eastern so, Ukraine. And just to go back a little bit in history, the president of the United States, Bill Clinton, signed that Budapest Memorandum. Did the United States betray Ukraine? No. The problem is that, you know, this memorandum is more a political document. This is not a legally binding document. But we do understand that everyone has not only moral but political obligations to defend the world and to defend peace and stability. And it seems that the U.S. is doing everything to support Ukraine. And the U.S. is a flagship in terms of sanctions and in terms of strong and bold position against the Russian light well, aggression. The U.S. is not doing everything you want, though. You want weapons, lethal aid from the United States to fight these Russians, right? Absolutely. You're what not we, getting that. Look, what we are asking for, as I already told, we are not just talking about the Ukrainian case. This is the threat to the entire globe and mainly to the EU. So Ukraine is like a bullet, bulletproof jacket for the European Union. We ask for the defensive weapon in order to deter Russian And what's army. the response from the United States when you say to the president or the vice president or the secretary of defense, secretary of state, we need weapons to defend Ukraine? Because Ukraine's a big country and Russia is taking over increasing parts of it. What is their answer to you? Well, Ukraine is the only country who is fighting against the regular Russian army. The answer is that the U.S. already sent Ukra uh, American soldiers to train Ukrainian National Guard. They sent some electronic warfare. But we definitely need to get more, uh, mainly the defensive weapon, to deter and to contain Russians. So when you ask for that and they say no, what's their reasoning? Well, they are considering and contemplating this option. The reason is quite simple. They believe that this could escalate the situation in Ukraine. But it's already escalated. Russians supplied hundreds of tanks, hundreds of hovitzers, modern artillery, and even SA-11, SA-15, and SA-22. But you know the Russians deny that. Well, the they deny that there are any Russian troops in Ukraine right now. These are all Ukrainian, they say, these are Ukrainian forces who, who may be loyal to Russia, but these are Ukrainian citizens who are fighting your government. I want to be very clear. More than 10,000 Russian military boots are on the Ukrainian soil. And in addition, about 30,000 of Russian-led terrorists trained by Russian FSB and Russian army. So what's it going to take to get rid of them? Well, we expected that this so-called means deal could be a good way how to de-escalate the situation. And we still believe that this is the only solution. But in order to make this solution viable and in order to implement the means deal, we need to underpin diplomatic efforts with the strong, durable Ukrainian military. And we need to retain unity between the EU and the U.S. and to act boldly, wisely and in concert against the Russian-led aggression. Because yesterday we heard President Obama say at his news conference in Germany that the sanctions are working and the Russian economy is in deep trouble right now as a result of those U.S., those European sanctions. And he said he's willing to go further and escalate the sanctions if the Russians don't retreat. Will he, but Putin is showing absolutely no sign, despite the painful economic response in Russia, of responding to those sanctions. Well, mainly Russia was affected by the huge slide in oil prices and, in addition, by sanctions that have been imposed by the U.S. and by the EU. The ultimate goal of Putin is to resume the Soviet Union. He wants not only Crimea, Donetsk or Lugansk. He wants the entire Ukraine. And this is up to the free world to deter Russia, to stop this Russian-led aggression and to make Russia to pay the price and to obey the international law and order.
Do you fear some members of the European Union are weakening their resolve on these sanctions because it's, in effect, it's hurting some of their own economies? You know, that's what Putin expected. Putin expected to split the EU. Has he succeeded in splitting the EU? Not yet. But you fear that? Well, this could happen, but I strongly believe that the EU sticks to the values, but not to value. Ukraine is not a NATO ally like Estonia or Lithuania or Latvia and this was a huge mistake in 2008 you remember of course we remember all of that when uh, there was that possibility Uh, but uh, do you believe and you're an expert in this area and you're on the front lines in Ukraine that that Putin and Russia would do to a NATO ally under treaty obligations with the United States and other NATO allies what it has done to Ukraine never and the thing is that we missed a chance you remember in 2008 in Budapest, uh, in Bucharest, sorry, during the NATO meeting, uh, we were not allowed to join MAP, membership action plan with NATO. And what happened next? Russia just invaded Georgia. And in a few years, Russia that didn't pay the price illegally annexed Crimea and invaded the east of Ukraine. So Russia posed a threat to the three world and to NATO member states. Look, Putin, what, look what Putin is doing. He's constantly intimidating the EU, NATO member states, sending his bear jets and submarines to your borders. So we need to realize that Russia possessed the threat to the US, to the EU, and to the global order. While you're in Washington, I assume you're meeting with top administration officials from the Obama administration and members of Congress. What's the bottom line message you're, you're bringing to the United States right now? I assume you want lethal military equipment. Based on everything I'm hearing, the U.S. doesn't want to do that. But what's your bottom line request? To send a strong signal that the Ukrainian nation is united, that we want to succeed, that we've been fighting for the European values for our freedoms and liberties. That's everything what the United States stands for. So we have to do it jointly to make this world better and to make Ukraine a success story. And tell our viewers here in the United States, in North America, why this should matter to them right now. This matters to the globe. You are the leader of the free world. The United States is a country of real democracy, of real freedoms and liberties. So you are to defend the world and you are to protect the world and you are to support Ukraine as we stick to the same values and to the same ideas. But you don't expect U.S. troops to be dispatched in a serious way to Ukraine. They can go there to train Ukrainian military personnel. But you really don't expect what we call boots on the ground, combat forces, to be deployed to Ukraine, do you? You know, my answer, we don't expect to have military boots on the ground. But what we expect, we, we expect to have your business shoes on Ukrainian ground. What does that mean? Investments. American business is to invest into Ukraine. We've passed through difficult, painful reforms, but we want to make this country better. And we want to improve our investment climate. And having American investors being in Ukraine is another protective shield. And this is the way how to boost our economy and how to make Ukraine a success story. And the best way to respond to President Putin to show that Ukraine is a successful and flourishing European state that is supported by the United States. Arseny Yatsyanskuk is the uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine. Uh, welcome to Washington. Welcome to the United States. Mr. Prime Minister, good luck to you. Good luck you, to all the people of Ukraine. Thanks to the American people. Thank you.